The metric system is a is the modern system of units that was made to allow uh, international trade to occur since the in the old system each country had their own measures units and measures so you couldn't trade easily um, in the metric system we have a series of properties units for properties such as for length or distance our unit is the meter it's slightly longer than our yard the symbol is lowercase m. Within the metric system, there are some subsets of units. Uh, one subset is the SI system, Systeme International. And the SI unit system is good when we're converting between different properties. Because we know that if we put SI units in, we get SI units out. And of course, we can modify the size of our unit here with prefixes. Uh, in the SI system, we use the prefix that we're told to use. But we don't generally have to use the SI system. Again, it's primarily useful for when we're converting between properties. So for distance, it's the meter, lowercase m for the symbol. For mass, the unit is gram, uh, G for the symbol, lowercase g. That's not the SI unit. For SI, it'd be the kilogram. So kilo means 1,000. So kilogram is 1,000 grams. So kg is a symbol for that. And that is our unit for the SI system. So we're going to have to know which units are SI units. And we're going to have to be able to convert between uh, the various prefixes of these units. For atomic scale things, uh, the unit is the unified atomic mass unit. Internationally, they abbreviate it as U. We tend to abbreviate it as AMU. For time, our unit is a second, S for second. And this is our SI unit. For temperature, we have two uh, temperature scales, Celsius and Kelvin. They have the same degree size. So if we increase temperature 10 degrees Celsius, we have increased the temperature 10 Kelvin. And Kelvin doesn't use degrees, it's just Kelvin. Uh, there are a number of properties where we have to absolutely use Kelvin and cannot use Celsius for that. And Kelvin is our SI unit of temperature. The amount of substance is the mole, M-O-L, M-O-L-E, and we abbreviate it just by dropping off that E. If we were to do any electrochemistry, we measure current in terms of amperes. If we do any photochemistry, we measure light intensity by candelas. So these are base units, and these can be used to make other units. So the unit for energy, we have two metric units, joule and calories, but joule is the SI unit. Calorie was made for chemists, joule was made for physicists, and the joule is used in the SI system. And this shows that the joule is actually made up of those other base units. Uh, so joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Volume, we use liter as our primary unit of measure. It's not the SI unit. The cubic meter is the SI unit. And there are a thousand liters in a cubic meter. For density, we're going to use either grams per ml or grams per cubic centimeter. They mean the same because that cubic centimeter is a milliliter. Neither one of these is the SI unit. The SI unit would be a kilogram per cubic meter.
for concentration, we use molarity, moles per liter. So that's the moles of soy per liter of solution. That is not our SI unit. If we needed SI, it'd be a mole per cubic meter. For pressure, we use atmospheres and several other units of pressure. Uh, the SI one unit of pressure is the Pascal. Um, and a Pascal would be a Newton per meter squared. So pressure is uh, force per unit area. So Newton per meter squared is our force per unit area. So Pascal would be our SI unit of pressure and specific heat, which measures how uh, materials change temperature as we add or remove heat from them. Uh, we tend to use uh, joules per gram Celsius or joules per gram Kelvin. Uh, they would have the same equivalency, but uh, if we needed SI, it would be joules per kilogram Kelvin. So we can modify our size of our unit with a prefix. And if we're not trying to use SI, we're allowed to use uh, whatever prefix that we're allowed we're, that we want to use. So going up in size, a thousand would be a kilo. And we have that uh, symbols K. So these symbols can never stand by themselves. They need a property. So we can have kilometer, kilometer, a kilogram, a kilosecond. So this symbol has to be followed by the symbol of the unit that we're looking at. So mega would be a million, a thousand times a thousand. So a thousand kilos would be a mega. And that's a capital M for the symbol. A thousand megas would be a giga. So that would be a billion or 10 to the ninth, and that's a capital G. And a thousand gigas would be a tera, so that'd be 10 to the 12, and that's the capital T. To go down to smaller sizes, we have a couple that are not multiples of a thousand. So we start off with one tenth. That's a deci. So lowercase d for one tenth. And one tenth we can write as 10 to the minus one. So this would be one tenth is 10 to the minus one. Next one would be one hundredth, which is 10 to the minus two. And that's a centi, lowercase c. Now we know that cent is talking about hundreds so that's why we call our pennies cents because they're one hundredth of a dollar now we're on to the multiples of a thousand so one thousandth will be a milli lowercase m and then a thousandth of a thousand a thousandth of a milli will be a micro so that's one millionth. And that's the uh, Greek letter mu, which is uh, hard to get on our computers at times. So uh, sometimes we'll see it as um, MC. So a microgram could be written as MCG. Nano would be a billionth of something, lowercase n. And pico would be a trillionth. Of something 10 to the minus 12, and that's a lowercase p. So we're going to have to be able to convert between these metric units, and we have to be able to identify uh, what units are SI units. So let's practice some of these. So 
So to convert between units, if we want to convert 0.0267 kilograms to milligrams, we need some equivalencies. So one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So we can use that to convert between kilogram and grams. And we're going to start off with this number. And what we want to do is divide this by one of the sides so we have a ratio. The ratio that we want is going to have kilograms in the denominator. So we divide both these sides by one kilogram. So this left side just turns into one. So we're allowed to multiply any number by one without changing its value. It will, it will change its units. So in this case, we're going to do 1,000 grams over one kilogram. And when we multiply units, when we multiply numbers with units, we're multiplying the units together. So we're going to end up with a kilogram times gram over kilogram. We'll just rearrange it and say kilogram times gram times kilogram over kilogram. And this turns into one, so it disappears. So we're just left with gram as our answer. But we're not finished. We're only going to get grams. So we want to get down to milligrams. So we look for the equivalence. So one milligram is 1,000 grams. I like big numbers. So I'm going to reverse this around and say 1,000 milligrams equals one gram. And again, I want to make my units cancel off. In this case, I have grams that I want to disappear. So I'm going to divide both sides by one gram. Right side turns into one. So I'm multiplying this by a thousand milligrams over one gram. We check our units. Kilogram divided by kilogram will disappear. Gram divided by gram will disappear. We're left with milligrams. So we do the calculation. Multiplying by a thousand is moving the decimal point three places. So one, two, three. We do it a second time for the second thousand. We end up with a 2,600 milligrams for the answer. So let's convert milliliters to liters. So one milliliter equals one thousandth of a liter, or one thousand milliliters equals one liter. So we want the uh, milliliters on the bottom, so we divide by one thousand ml. That's equal to one. So we're doing one liter over 1,000 milliliters. So we end up with 0 0.042 liters. So again, it's just dividing by 1,000. We're going to be moving our decimal place, decimal point three places to the left, one, two, three. So let's go uh, millimeters to micrometers, so 1.47 millimeters. We could do a, a straight uh, conversion between them. So, um, or we could do it in two steps. I like two, two steps. I'm not trying to figure out uh, the direct one and possibly make mistakes. So, one millimeter again is one thousandth of a meter. So 1,000 
millimeters equals one meter. And I'll divide by the thousand, so I have one meter over 1,000 millimeters. And then my chronometer is one millionth, millionth of a meter. So we can write that in scientific notation. So one micrometer is uh, this way, 10 to the minus six meters. And again, I like larger numbers, so I'll switch it over. I have 10 to the six micrometers equals one meter. We're going to have the micrometer on top. So we have um, 10 to the six micrometers over one meter. And this term here, I'll just show you uh, another way that we can do this. So we have 10 to the six over that thousand, we can write as 10 to the three. So we have a division of exponential terms. It's going to come out to be 10 to the six minus three or 10 to the third. We do this all on our calculator, but it helps to know the relationship between them. So we're multiplying this by 10 to the third. So we're moving a decimal point three places to the right. So the 1.47 becomes 1470 micrometers. Let's convert centimeters meters. So one centimeter equals one hundredth of a meter or one hundred centimeters equals one meter. So we put meter on top, one hundred centimeters on bottom. So this is going to make us move our decimal point two places to the left. So we end up with a 0.523 meters. And then one more of these, 8.43 centigrams, two milligrams. So I'll change my meters into grams here. So we have um, 100 centigrams is one gram. So that's my first step. I have um, one gram on top. 100 centigrams on bottom. Then I want to go to milligrams. And I'll turn my millimeters into grams up here. So a thousand milligrams is one gram. I want one gram on the bottom. So 1,000 milligrams on top one gram on bottom. It's always good to check our units. Oops. units. So centigram will cancel with centigram. Gram divided by gram cancels off. We're left with milligram, what we're looking for. And watching the units is called unit analysis. We can do a lot of problems just by watching our units, make sure they cancel off. If we get the units to cancel properly and get the unit that we're looking for, the, the number should be correct number. So in this case, um, going down in milligrams, we have a um, dividing by 100, we're moving the decimal point two places left, and we're moving the decimal point two three places right. We end up with an 84.3 milligrams for our answer. Lighting is changing. <laughs>